seven ways to your breakthrough. There are seven good ways to your breakthrough. How to make it? How do you succeed? How do you make it so that you become a successful? Now that Jesus is in the grave because of us, now that Jesus is already in the grave, they have said this is the end. On Friday they said this is the end of the teachings of Jesus Christ. This is the end of the Jesus we are talking about. That is what they say. That is what they confirm. That this is the end. They sacrifice. They say he will never become. He will never succeed because his teachings were the problem to the society. The teachings that you have may have caused you so many problems. The blessings you have may have caused you so many blessings. And that is why they rose up to stop you from the blessing. That is why they rose up to make sure you don't succeed. That is why they rose up to make sure that they have put a block. They have put a foundation that will contain you. That we are born in foundations. Because they are demons that deal with our foundation. They are deal with our success stories. They are demons just placed to make sure that you never have a breakthrough. They are demons that deal with your future. They are demons that will only deal with your breakthroughs. Praise be the name of God. Today I want to teach you how to get out of those demons. How to conquer those demons. Because we are faced by challenges. Because not because we are bad people. Not because God hates you. Not because God does not like you. But because God has given you something. Yourself, you've got a something in your hand. You've got a flower that is about to flourish. You've got a flower that is about to come up. You've got something so wonderful. And that is why I've targeted you. That is why they want you finished. That is why they don't want to see you succeed in life. That is why they want exactly you to be finished. And I want to confirm to you today that there's something. There's a lease, another lease of a paper. Once they are dead, they are finished with the first page. There is page two. So don't worry with their first page. Their first page, you might have wasted your life. The first page, you might have been confused. The first page, you might have led, been led into confusion. But the second page is a page where you will discover yourself. It's a page meant for you to rediscover yourself. It's a page that is meant for you to become whom you are. The destiny that is you is going to flourish. The destiny that is in you is going to be seen, to be witnessed, and to be there. May God bless you tonight. May God bless you today. Because a new lease of life, a new page will open today. That the way you came here, you will not go the way you came. You will go in a new page, a page that is blank, where you're going to start writing your story. Where you're going to write your biography. Where you're going to write what you are, what God has decided you to be, what God has decided you to become, what God has made you for. Because the Bible says, before you were born, He knew you. He had set you aside, sanctified you, and ordained you to become a prophet, a prophet unto the nation. The Bible says He has given you power to triumph over snakes and the scorpions, and they are not going to hurt you. That no weapon fashioned against you, that it will conquer you. That it's not by power, or by, no, by force, or by energy, or by whatever you think you are, but by the Spirit of God, we are going to conquer. May the name of Jesus be praised. That Jesus is going to resurrect today in your life. That Jesus is going to change every situation, every name, every mandate that they have given unto you, and the things are not going to be the same again. Somebody say amen. amen. Because you are blessed. Tell your neighbor, I am a blessed woman, I'm a blessed man. If you're a man, say I'm a blessed man. If you're a woman, say I'm a blessed woman. Woman of the love of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. But I to say you are God, you can lift it. And I want to tell you today, they may have said you are not going to make it. If there is anything that I've been fought against, is this ministry. If there is any person that has been fought against, it's me. One day, as I was a chokora in the Dora, phase five, that is where I came to know the actual show. That is where we use Kuokota Machakura. You know, we used to wait for people from Runda to eat their food, then pack it as a, as what? As waste in a black paper or in a green paper as a garbage. Then inside our food, they also, they have kids, young kids. They have pampas and everything. That is the same place they put their pampas for the kids. And they throw away the food because the rich people don't eat. They 
They, they cook a lot of food, but they don't eat the whole of it. Waste is too much. It's a lot of waste than what they eat. Because they are people who just don't eat too much because of the discipline of not eating too much. Praise be the name of God. So the poo of the kids will be put inside the same package as the food that we are going to eat, to eat in the Lord Adamic side. And when these trucks will be here, because the trucks from Runda will be known, the trucks from uh, Modaiga are known, the trucks from other sporty places were known. So what we used to do, all those trucks used to be mine. So any truck coming from Runda, nobody will touch it, it's mine. Any truck coming from Modaiga, nobody will touch it, it's mine. But I answer you, my son, because I knew there is food there. I knew there is something that they have been thrown out. There will be a cloth thrown out. There will be something thrown out. And there will be nice food from Runda. Yet, it is covered maybe by a poo from a baby. When I answer you, my son. So all those trucks from Runda, they were mine. Why? What was the mentality behind me? Well, only the, uh, the trucks from Runda, the trucks from Rodaiga. And because there was something in me that told me, you don't belong where you are, you belong to Runda. Hallelujah. Yeah. You don't belong where you are. You may be in this position, and you are going to share the same meal. It's only the packaging is wrong, but the shape, you will share the same meal with the people in Runda. Someone say amen. Because God is going to provide a way that you are going to share with them where you belong. Hallelujah. Because I used to eat their food. Ata kama ilikuwa ni chapu. Hata kama ilikuwa na pupu, nilikuwa tunatua hiyo pupu na kata kidogo, unaodoa, unapaki na chakula mzuri. Wana Yesu asifuwe sana. But that never stopped me from becoming. Hallelujah. It never stopped me from becoming. And I had set my goals. That zita kula chakula ya mokuru kwa sababu hata haikuji. Ni pupu peke yake kula toka mokuru. Haina chakula kani. Wana Yesu asifuwe sana. Ukienda na daora na kule kuikide ni matakataka ni makaratasi ilikuwa indirekwa. So I had no interest na matakataka ni kutoka daora. Nilikuwa na interest na chakula ya mudaiga. Kwa hivyo, no yoyote ambayo ilikuwa na toka mudaiga, hakuna chokola mwezami, angeiguza. Why? Because I knew in myself, I don't belong hapa, I belong to Runda. I want to eat the meal with the people in Runda. I want to eat the food that is from the people from Modaiga. Hallelujah. I want to eat the food from the people from Kuna. I shared everything that came from Kuna, including their pupus. Hallelujah. You set your mind what you want to become, one day you will become. You set your mind what you want to be, you will be. But if you set your mind to poverty, you will become a poor man. If you set your mind to become rich, you will become rich. Yes, I was a chokora, but I controlled every truck that was coming to Dandora. I stopped every truck. Nilikuwa na guru kwa mdomo, but I was a leader of those chokoras. Nothing was, could be done without me accepting or refusing. Because I had said and put in myself, I am not the tail and the head. Even though I didn't know the Bible, but I had said in my life that I am not the head, I am not the tail, I am the head. Hallelujah. While you set and you plan yourself, irrespective of the situation you are in, you are going to change. I remember one day as I was in Mokuru Kualube, where I used to sell Changa and the meeting in Dawa. Then at one point, these Catholic people, they called the young people to take them to Intercontinental because there was a white man who wanted to see the rehabilitated young people from slums. And I was one of them. They didn't tell us the secret that we are being taken there because we have already been rehabilitated. Although nothing had happened to us, nobody has done any, had done anything. But because they want to collect money from Amsungu, we were taken and showcased. And I, because I was one of the bright young people in the slums, I was taken there as the one to represent. And I was coached what to say. And I said, and everybody clapped for me. Hallelujah. Because I talked a language the Muzungu wanted to hear. But a prepared language for Muzungu so that Muzungu can produce money for this man who wants to eat the money at my expense. Hallelujah. Those are the people that will use your destiny for their purposes. Those are the people that will come to their life and they use your destiny for their purposes. But as they use your destiny for their purposes, there is something that God will do. He will create a platform. Because from that day, something started happening in me. 
There are three things I picked from Intercontinental. I ate the food in the Intercontinental for my first time. Nilikula chakula ya buffet. For first time, nakula chakula na rudia tena na bio buffet is endless. It's bottomless. It's a five star hotel. I ate, sorry? Yeah, it's a five cost me. You eat Unakuta pale unapepakiwa kuna 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 maziwa na kuna na hivi tu ya watoto na itakuwa namna gani? Serious. Kuita bit na conflict unaekea pale na vexed za kukula kwanza ama ni status. Unapita hapo kidogo na hapo kuna supu ya marege na kuna nini unakula. This things I have never I had no seen them. But what amazed me because I needed a testimony. Food I've eaten. There is no testimony that I can take to Mokuru. I went to the toilet and found there was tissues we eaten in the continental. I picked, I cut a huge blow and I put it in my pocket. I then went for the service. I put a lot of service. So my pocket, it required the food of my day. Now you put in the food. I took the toothpicks. You took the and put in the continental. And another thing I took was salt. And I took sugar. That is the reason we can package Kadoga to Kamiandikwa in the continental. Because I wanted to go to Mokuru and tell the people in Mokuru, ah, where God had taken me. That I was eating in the intercontinental. If you set your mind to what God wants you to be, if you set your mind where you want to be, you will become. Nowadays, I go, that is where I'm going for my lunch today. That's where I'll be going for my dinner today. That is where I'll be going for my summer breakfast today. And because I had set my mind, I was in Mokuru. I never died when others were dying. I never perished when others were perishing. God prepared me for the purposes of what I prepared my mind for. Hallelujah. What, how you prepare your mind will determine how far you're going to go. How you prepare your mind will determine how many years you're going to live in this world. If you prepare your mind that you're going to be rich, it doesn't matter how many days are going to be, but you're going to be to be rich. God will make sure you survive so that whatever you prepare your mind will come to pass. Hallelujah. If you are prepared yourself to be poor, Refuse that God. I was not born to be poor. I was not born to suffer. I was not born to become what you wanted. I was in Mukuru physically, but spiritually I was not in Mukuru. You are poor now physically, but inside you you are not poor, you are a rich man. That one day you will be flying from one country to another country. If you ask this woman from America, maybe they find race for her air ticket. Maybe they find race for her visa application. Maybe something had to happen. They had to sell a cow. Because in her she believed you. if she goes to America, something will happen into her life. Life. Something will change in her life. Something will work against all the opposite sides. All the oppositions will be destroyed for her to become the woman that God created. God is creating you again. God is lifting you. God is making your life become a better life again. There is hope in believing in God. There is hope in believing in yourself. There is hope in everything that you need to do. In the book of Genesis, chapter Genesis chapter number 12, verse number 1, it is the call of Abraham. And God told Abraham, Amka uondoke maka ile inchi unaenda kukubalikia. It is the time of the lowest of your life. Imagine God comes and speaking to you. When you have established your house, you have your land, you have built uh, your empire. You have cattle, you have uh, camels, you have goats, and you have everything. Then God comes and tells you, prepare now. And start a journey to where I'm going to bless you. Then, because you believe in this God and you trust this God, you go back to your wife and tell your wife, 
that God has instructed in me that we go. Then the next question the wife will ask, where are we going? It is a big question. It is a, a million dollar question. Where are we going? And then this man will tell you that I don't know where we are going. Then how are we going? Because you must know where you are going to plan for your going. You must know where your destiny is so that you can plan where you are going. But now this is a plan check without a signature. That this check, if you go and bank it, you are going to get a million more. Yet there is no signature in that check. But there is a signature. And the most and the Abraham was commanded by God to start a journey and the call. He was told by God, where you are going, where I'm taking you, that is where your blessing is. But the way to there, you don't have a bearing. You don't have the understanding. You don't have the way taking you there. But one thing, there is a promise. Where you will go, I'm going to bless you. Where you will go and reach there, I'm going to bless you. Then he tells you, do not carry any of your family members. Do not go with anybody. Because you are going there. I want to go and bless you. The reason is, because God wants you alone. When God is blessing you, he must, you, you must be isolated. You must live in isolation. Because God wants to deal with you. He doesn't want to deal with you when you have a friend. He doesn't want to deal with you when you have a father around you. He doesn't want to breathe deal with you when you have a wife around you or your sister around you. At some time, Abraham lost his wife. At some time, he went until there was so much resistance along the way as he tried to fight, to, to, to fight this battle. The battle was so fierce until at some point he had to surrender his wife to somebody. Imagine surrendering your wife. That wife you really love. That wife that you really want to care. This beautiful, beautiful girl. You surrender into this man, knowing that this man is going to eat this woman. Hallelujah. It's so beautiful for a man. Surrendering my wife, knowing it's my wife. Ah, uh, something's gonna happen to him, to her. And then he went because of fear. But what was the reason? There was one reason that happened to him. There was one reason that happened as along the way he faced a lot of challenges. Why did he face these challenges? That's a million dollar question. That he faced these challenges because of him not listening to the instructions from God. Hallelujah. The challenges that we face in our life, it is because we have failed to listen to what God is instructing us to do. God has asked us, let us move from this level to another level. And you are there trying to stop the level of God. You are there trying to stop the will of God. You are there trying to stop what God has said that you are going to happen. All going to happen. Unajaribu kusuia. Unajaribu kusema hili ya panika. But God has decided. What God has decided, has decided, nobody can change it. What God has said is going to happen. It will happen with you or without you. This thing will happen. At, will it happen? Even if we refuse we here at the city stadium to go to Coffee Plaza. God will create another generation that will go to Coffee Plaza. Hallelujah. Then Abraham was commanded by God that go and don't go with any of your family member. Just with your wife or your wife alone. Not with any family member. But God because of sympathy. Abraham because of sympathy. And because he was a man, he knew I have a son who belongs to my brother. And this son that belongs to my brother, my brother is past, my brother is no more. So as a man, as a responsible father, I need to go with this kid so that I can take care of my brother's kid. Because we have come, which is very genuine, which is very good, very important for you. Because you cannot just see, sit down and see your brother's children suffering as a man, as a human being. You will still have the sympathy and the carry along these children. And cut along these children because your brother has left the Lord and he is no more. Therefore, you carry this boy so that this boy will not serve. But there is a chemist, something else. Because God instructed Abraham to not carry any of your son, when you carry any of your family member. God had a clear instruction do not carry anybody, do not go with anybody apart from your wife. Your wife is not a family member, your wife is. You are partner. Your wife is from another family. It is not coming from your family member. But this Lutu is a family member. That is what God had instructed. Do not carry any of your family member. But your wife will. 
your wife, you can carry. Abraham, with the only his, he agreed with God, but at some point he carried the mercy of his brother. That is where we fail. When you are doing the work that God has given you, you stop carrying the mercy of others. You instead carry the instructions that God has instructed you. If you go with the instructions of God, you are going to succeed. But if you carry mercy alongside with you, you are going to fail. When Abraham decided to go with this young boy, he thought, I'm helping my brother. But he failed to understand the same God that has kept, the same God that went with his brother, the same God that has kept this boy, is the same God that is telling him to not go with the enemy of your family. Because he had the plan for Lutu. He had the good plans for Lutu. He knew that Lutu is a human being I have created. He's a human being I have made. He's a human being that is going to exist. Therefore, God had plans for Lutu. The plans were not connected to Abraham. Lutu's plan with God had a different direction. Yet Abraham decided to carry Lutu to go with him, distracting the plan of God in Lutu. Therefore, when Lutu came into Abraham, also Lutu decided to distract the plans of God in Abraham. Hallelujah. When you decide to be sympathetic to the cause, when you decide to be sympathetic to other issues, then you lose the target. Tell your neighbor, I want to be alone. That is why normally you find me, I don't have a friend. Because I want to be guided by God. Because if I call you as my friend, you will just try advising me this direction. If I start moving with you as my friend, then you touch Utanibadisha Unyambia Hivi. Because sometimes I will find you, you are stuck somewhere, and you don't want to come out somewhere, you will waste my time as I try to call you. The only thing I'm supposed to do is to believe. I have a God, you have a God. Let your God help you to go that other line. Do not be sympathetic. Therefore, point my point number one for this, it means that hit a low point. One way of you break, having your breakthrough, hit a low point. And hitting a low point is alienating yourself from everything that used to keep, give you comfort. Abraham alienated for himself from everything and decided to begin a journey, to begin a way forward, to begin a direction, to begin a move that was a lonely move. A move that he tried and convinced the wife that we are going where God has instructed us. Where? You don't know. He paused and he moved. Yet there was nothing that I was giving a direction. Not even a map. They didn't know. Because he said, God, he is going to, lay, to give you direction. Sometimes you make drastic decisions. You make decisions that everybody will not be able to understand you. Everybody look at you and they see it is like you are mad. You hit your low. You go down. You surrender the ego. You surrender your position. You surrender everything that is in you to begin a new journey. A journey that will be guided by God. You don't need your friend. You don't need your mother. You don't need your brother. You don't need your fellow colleague. You need yourself alone. Yourself to walk a self journey. A journey that is going to where God is going to give a direction. When you hit your low, you only listen to God. When you hit your law, you begin afresh. When you hit your law, you don't listen to your mother. You don't listen to your father. You don't listen to your boss. You listen to yourself and listen to God. And when God tells you this is a direction, you follow the direction. It will look completely opposite to your life. It will look like you have come to an end. Because everybody will come and tell you, you have been a CEO. And where you have gone? The zero and nothing shows development. You have been a CEO, but where you have gone, there is nothing that can help you. There is nothing that can become of you. There is nothing that can make you succeed. But that is a time when you hit low, you surrender for God to take over. When you hit low, you give yourself in for God to control you, to make another move for you. When Abraham decided to move with God, God guided him only. He had a mistake of carrying this young man who later came to disturb him, who later came to cause all the way when you could have got our yenda, when he put a resistance. And this resistance was not coming because God did not, God, God hated Abraham, or because God had made a mistake. It is because Abraham made a mistake. 
So sometimes the challenges you are facing in life, it is because of a slight small mistake of being sympathetic to some people, being sympathetic to some causes, being sympathetic to some places. God wants you to be yourself. Leave any other person because you are not tied to them. Your destiny is not tied to me. Your destiny is not tied to your mother. Your destiny is not tied to your brother. Your destiny is tied to yourself and to your God. Once you surrender, your destiny will be tied to God. Once you surrender to God, God will hold your hands and He will walk with you and He will take you where you belong, what you are supposed to be. He will give you position because He says, I'm going to create a way where there is no way. For him to create a way, you must have started a channel. For him to create a way, you are not seated, you are walking, and he will be creating a way as you are going. Why? Because you surrendered and you said, This is what I'm going to follow. And I have decided, like John, me and my family, me and my people, we shall follow you, and we are not going to back. So as you hit your law, it is surrendering to God. Tell your neighbor, I have chosen one way of surrendering to God. You may be a mean, a businessman. You may be a, a very progressive man, a very successful man in the society. But sometimes you surrender. All what you had, you give in and surrender and start afraid. When I was brought to this church, this is a building I really didn't want to be associated with because it's a small, according to my name, which is a big name. I saw this is a small thing. I had a big hole just the other way, just at the other side of the block. So I, thought I wanted the other side. And everybody said the other side is good because it will accommodate many people. No, it owe it the name that you have. This other side will bring many people who will be coming there. But there is one thing God did one. He did not want me to start from top. He wanted me to start from down so that he can grow me according to his plan. So that he can grow me according to his arrangement. So that he can grow me according to what he wants me to become. Praise be the name of God. And when I came back and decided, decided this is a place, we started only with seven people. These ten people agreed uh, uh, to Kaidaria Kongezeka, we became 20, we became 30. Again, we dropped again. We became five. Then we became again seven. Then we became again ten. Then we dropped again. We became seven. Then we cramped again to twenty, to thirty, to forty. Then we dropped again. Because God was training me how to go up and how to go down. As you see and sink into the plan and into his will. Then God promotes you. Once you accommodate God in your life, once you accommodate God in your life, it is that you have gone down. When you accommodate God, you must surrender your ego. You must surrender all your plans. You must surrender all your names. You must surrender everything that is in you so that God can lift you up. So that God can make you a different vessel that is good to be used. There is this Isaiah, God tells, comes and tells Isaiah, and as who is there, who is ready to be used? Then he, Isaiah says, here I am. And this only came when Uzziah died. Praise be the name of God. He, you must die for you to become a vessel. The ego in you must die for you to be lifted, for you to be given that position, for you to be given that power, for you to succeed in life, for you to become then you must die and the godly one to rise up. You are going to rise up if you die. If you die, Jesus is already in the grave so that he can lift the whole world. He had to die because of this world. He had to die because of you and me. Once he goes the grave, he destroys every foundation. So when he comes up, he comes up with your salvation. That is why we have the salvation of Jesus today. Because he agreed with the plans of God. The plans of God was to redeem man, to bring man into the kingdom, to bring man into the will, to bring man to succeed, to bring man to health, to bring man to become, to bring man to become the best and the good plan that he had when he put the man at the Adam, at the Garden of Eden. So God is going to lift you up if only there is this condition. If you hit your law, start planning to hit your law. Start planning to go down as we start again. Start planning in your marriage to go down, surrender. Start planning in your business to go down. Start planning to, to be able to be guided. Just if you've been a teacher, go down and sit down and be taught. If you've been a pastor,
go down and sit down and be taught the word of God. If you have been a prophet, go down and start again. If you have been a big man, you cannot walk being a big man with God. You must be a small man for God to walk with you. You must be a small baby for God to be in, in you. You must surrender your life and that is the life of being a Christian. To become a Christian is surrendering and allowing Jesus to take control over your life. Then God will bless you. God will lift you. God will make you a great person. That is in the book of Genesis 12, verse 1 to 4. And in number 2, you have to analyze your story. To have your breakthrough come, you have to analyze your story. You have to understand. You have to have a story over your story. You have to understand who you are. Because what you don't analyze your story to understand who you are, you are not going to become. Because you must know who you are when you are born. Because in the book of Jeremiah 1 verse 4, the Bible says, Before you were born, I knew you. Before your father and your mother came together, you were known. Before your grandfather and your grandmother on both sides were born, the God you still existed. If your grand and great great grandfathers, they are 500 years ago, that is when you started existing. There are some of you who are 200 years here. There are some of you who are 500 years old here. There are some of you who are 1,000 years old here, depending on your generation, depending where you've come from, depending on your grandmother, depending on your grand Because the Bible says, before you were born, I knew you. Before your mother and your father, your father came together, I knew you. Before your grandmother was born, I knew you. Before your great-grandmother was born, I knew you. So how many great-grandmothers are behind you. If you can be able to count how many great-grandmothers are behind you, that, that is the age that you are now. That is why you are told you are more than a conqueror. You are a winner and you are a victor because you are much stronger than the way you think. And that is why I'm telling you, you must write your history. You must be able to analyze yourself, how powerful you are, how strong you are, how old you are, how special you are for these things to happen. You must become a winner. There are some people who are here are old enough to become beggars. There are some here who are not supposed because you control, you control a huge territory. There are some here are mightful people, very powerful people. Kings, we have them here. Powerful business people, we have them here. Experienced people, we have them here. Because you have been existing for over 1,000 years. But you are a beggar and you find a young boy like this one come, a young boy like this one is commanding you who is 10, uh, 50 years old. Why? If you follow the history of this man, he is 1,000 years old. And if you follow the history of you, you are 400 years old. Because the ancestral going backward, when they started, it is long many years ago. And before those days, he existed. And he was known. And he was anointed. And he had been consecrated. And he had been preserved. And anointed to become a prophet and the nation. About 1,000 years ago. You, you were anointed about 400 years ago. He will come. As young as he is, he will command you. Because he is older than you in the spirit. Hallelujah. But I don't know whether you are getting me. I know you must understand me. I know you must understand. I know it's a big surprise to know that you are older than the way you think yourself. When I answer this that is where you find there is somebody who can give you a nice kerela. What is this? And those are the people we call geniuses. Those are the people that we call they are supernatural. These are people that we call, these people are not normal people. They are told that they are not normal. It is because they are older than you. Hallelujah. When I say, there are people you find they are touching a computer, you give them a laptop in three, four, five days, and a master your tap laptop and a kutoria to zikini kukodani. Baka unashaka kama nile laptop yako. No, before the laptop was created, he was created and given a laptop and they told this is your line. So all of us we have lines. All of us, all of us we have directions. And if you will analyze yourself, you will know this is my direction. You will know I'm called for this. You will know this is my move. You will know where I am going. Because once you analyze yourself, you'll be able to know where you will be tomorrow. Me, myself, I know where I will be 10, 10, 10 years to come. I know where I will be 20 years to come. I'm just following my path. I'm just doing what God called me for. I'm just being in where God planned him. And when Abraham tried to fight with his root, because some, at some point, 
Lut became so arrogant even to Abraham. And he told Abraham, you are successful not because of you. You are successful because I am successful. And at that point, you make decisive decisions. You make decisive decisions. Because there is a pastor who will be in this church. And because she knows how to praise, she knows how to preach, he knows how to praise, he knows how to preach, because when he speaks, everybody will stand up, will say, I will shout hallelujah. And he will think, because I am the one that excites the crowd, I'm carrying the anointing. I want to assure you, the anointing is being carried by the owner of the anointing. The anointing belongs to the owner of the vision. The one that I was called, I'm the one carrying the anointing. And this anointing, I just split it and give it to you. Moses was told, look for men and call them. Bring this man. And when he brought the right man, God got into him and he splashed some of his energies, plucked some of the anointing and he gave it, shared to them. They will even perform better than Moses. They will even have better thinking than Moses. But it does not mean Moses becomes under them. See, Moses had the controlling anointing, had the controlling power. When you are in this ministry, you have you are operating under the anointing of this ministry. If you become so anointed that you feel now because I'm so anointed, I'll go and start somewhere else without my permission. You think you are going to fail because I will cut the link between the anointing you are carrying and where you are going. You have to obey. You have to respect. You have to walk with the anointing. That you are operating under. If you move to another place, come seek permission from me. I will raise you so that you can go connect with the anointing where you're going. I'm still connected to my spiritual father, Bishop Harrison Nana. Whenever I want anything, whenever I am doing a move, I have to consult him. Until such a time, if I feel I don't need his anointing, I will go to him and tell him, My father, my daddy, I want to begin again. I want to start again. And everything that was under his grace will go with him and I will be left alone. And that is the serious mistake we make. That is a serious mistake we make in businesses. That is a serious mistake we make in ministries. That is a serious mistake we make in our marriages. That when you think this man is arrogant, yes, God has blessed you. He is a drunkard man, but God has still blessed you. He is a man that speaks stupid, but he still God has blessed you. And you decide to move out of that man because this man is drunkard you go away whatever you had with that man will super sure go you will not go with it you you become poor you become desolate and you will not succeed okay if this woman that you marry is the cause of your blessing and the human you become so egoistic that you cannot be able to wit to witness as your wife is prospering and you assisting the gifts of your wife and then you decide to move out don't imagine ever that you can go with this thing that was blessed through you through this woman it will be left there as you go to begin again so it is very sensitive for you if you don't analyze who you are because there are people who are blessed through their wives and there are people who are blessed through their husbands analyze yourself and see what you have is it because of my wife or is it because of my husband once you know you'll be able to make a, a proper move that will make you succeed but i as if we son you must be able to analyze yourself properly if you look, if you look at the story of joseph if you look at the story of Joseph, gives us an analytical process of becoming a great man. Joseph was sold by his own brothers because of a dream. He was not sold because he was beautiful or handsome. He was not sold because he had money. He was not sold because he had anything, but because of a destiny. Many people of you are suffering because the witches, they need notice. You got a destiny. You got a powerful destiny. And they were able to see it through the eye of a future, the eye of a, your future, a hundred years to come, what you are going to become. And then demons of destiny will be sent to you to make sure that you don't reach where you are supposed. They are demons and they are spirits. Demons are categorized and are meant to only monitor you and control your destiny, to make sure you don't penetrate to your destiny. And if you just live in your comfort zone, like Abraham, 
was in his comfort zone when God spoke to him because he was living with his father and while he was living with her father this man was rich because they say he went with his camels he went with his cows he went with cattle and he went with a lot of things that he went together then this thing that happened to Abraham he was already a rich man but in a comfort zone God wanted to bless him outside his comfort zone and to create his own channel praise be the name of God so when he started the journey of going the, the devil they knew this man is going to be blessed so they decided to create a demon to stop his destiny and this demon came in the name of Lutu and as he went and went Lutu always was there and Abraham faced challenges of life he went there's a place where he faced the Philistines and they would fight him there's a place where he went and found these Philistines and this, he, was a, he had a beautiful wife and he would think these guys are going to kill me because they came and asked who is this because the wife was so beautiful you see now the demons got into the wife because of carrying this gentleman in the name of Lutu this gentleman was an obstacle to the life of Abraham this gentleman was a, a destiny killer this gentleman was a demon that was placed there to kill the destiny of Abraham and this gentleman kept walking and demon because they knew this man we have to destroy him what he did they empowered Lutu in the life of Abraham they made sure that Lutu becomes brainy they made sure that Lutu becomes well organizer they made sure that Lutu can be able to plan this old man and if this old man sat and let everything to be run and managed by Lutu that is how the demons planned and organized to make Lutu become better to make Lutu become smart to make Lutu become wiser to make Lutu become progressive and as they walked Lutu at some time when the demon when Abraham reached the ground where he was about to be blessed the demon signaled and they told each other this man is about to be blessed so what do we do let's use our vessel Lutu to make sure he destroys this man there are people in your life that have been distinct and programmed by demons that they will come and attack you at the point of your destiny making at the point where you're going to penetrate at the point where you're going to succeed at the point where you're going to be uh, to receive your blessing when it was the time for abraham to be blessed because he had obeyed and moved to a new ground where god was about to bless him that is when lutu came and told in the face and told this man that you know what all these cows are here because of me all these camels are here because of me all these goats are here because of me even you you are what you are because of me those is not Lutu that was speaking the demons in Lutu were speaking because they wanted to stop Abraham they wanted Abraham to start fighting with this man until at some point the workers of Abraham and the workers of Lutu had to fight and they were fighting over a piece of land they were fighting over 10 acres of land because when I went there when I, where I was shown this is where the fight was it is a peace equivalent to Nairobi alone Nairobi city not even Nairobi the slums there it is the city capital CBD that's the land where Abraham and the Abraham uh, workers and the Lutu workers were fighting for and it was a fierce battle until a time when Abraham came the senses came he realized I'm making a mistake he came and told Lutu and asked Lutu what you want? And Lutu said, Because all that was they were trying to project in him in the spirit of bitterness so that he can fail the test of him succeeding. So that he can fail the test of him becoming the great man, the man of faith. But I praise be the name of God. So he provoked, uh, Lutu provoked Abraham and told Abraham, whatever is here does not belong to you. Then Abraham realizing this is a test of my life, he decided to choose to go low, to get out of everything, to leave everything and let it go. Sometimes we let it go. Sometimes we let it go. Sometimes we release the, what we are and allow God to manifest, to manifest in our life. To allow God to manifest in our businesses. To allow God to manifest in our businesses and in our ministries. To allow God to manifest 
in our families and God will show himself for sure. Abraham came and told this young man, get out of my life. So do this. Take that which you think belongs to you. Take it away. Choose the path that you want to go. Because he knew I'm carrying the anointing. So whatever that is going to happen, there's nothing that's going to happen against me. He chose and told this young man, choose. And the young man, because of the ego, because of the demons that were in this man, they went and they picked all good goats, all good cows, all good camels, and they went to the land that was fertile. They left this old Muse to a land that was no soil but the stones. And then they left himself. And immediately as they left, this is very powerful. This is very important for you to know. Immediately Lutu and Kaman left. That is the day the eyes of Abraham opened. There are some people that you have. There are some things that you do that you have to drop. There are some characters you do that you have to drop. Until I got this man with a shisha, he did not know that he can become a great man. But I can assure this man is going far, is going borders, is crossing over to other borders. He will become a great man. He will become a sensational. People will be looking for him. People will be paying for his services. Praise be in the name of God. But the devil had shown him, take this seizure, it will be keeping you busy. Until you know that you have a potential, until you know that you have an authority, until you know that you have something powerful in you, and drop that which you are doing, so that which is in you can start working. That is when your destiny will start. Abraham's eyes opened, and the God, remember they were fighting for a piece of land. Once the eyes opened, Abraham was told, just open your eyes and see where the sky reaches. I can just tell you, you will never see the end of the sky. There, that is the end of the sky. But by the time you reach there, the sky will have moved. That is how powerful you are. That is how powerful you are. That is what God created you to be. That is what God created and said you are going to become. Because as you go to the sky, the sky will move further. As you go to where you move further, the sky will take you further. Until you reach where you are supposed to go. Because where you are supposed to go, it is endless. You will never reach where you are supposed to go. Because God is God that has no boundaries. God is a God that does not have limitation. God is a God that does not have the, the poor people or sick people. God is a God of abundance. He told Abraham, open your eyes, look at the skies. Can you be able to count the stars? Then he was given that time. Can you count the stars? He was unable to count the stars. And he was told, that's how big you are. That is how rich you are. Then he was told, can you count the hair in your head? Then he said, you cannot be able. Then if you cannot be able, that is how superior you are to everybody. Meaning that when he hit his low, he was lifted up. When you hit your low, you are lifted up. You are raised up. You become powerful. You become anointed. You become the grace of God. We always walk with you. Praise be the name of God. Number three, make a decision like Esther. When you make a decision, Esther said, I'm going to get in there. If I die, I die. And if I'm not going to die, I'm going to come with wit. I'm going to fight for. I'm going to win. He raised an altar for God and he told his uncle Mordecai to make sure that everybody goes to fasting and everybody fasted, not only man and women fasted, including their chicken, including their cows, including their camels, including their goats. All of them were made to fast for three days. For three days, cows were crying. For three days, goats were crying. For three days, camels were crying, crying for the salvation of their tribe. Crying for the salvation of their country. Crying for the salvation of your business. Crying for the salvation of your marriage. They cried, all of them. Cows were crying. Sometimes you make a decision. A decision. Sometimes you make concrete. You say, if I die, let me die, but I'm going to move. If I die, let me die, but I'm going to make a save. If I die, let me die, but I'm going to stand. Praise be the name of God. You have to make a decision. decision. You have to make it. Whether you're going to lose everybody, you better lose everybody, but be in the will of God. 
If you are going to lose a marriage, you better lose that marriage, but be in the will of God. If you are going to lose a job, you better lose that job, but be in the will of God. Because when you are in the will of God, you are propelled. When you are in the will of God, you succeed. Esther was a woman that I would hate to have her in my life. But I used to say, every woman, you must be careful by the Esthers. Esthers are destroyers of the family. Hallelujah. Esther's are the destroyers of the family because she raised an altar and got into her family, destroyed the family for her to get position because of her nation. Hallelujah. Amen. Many marriages have been fallen down by Esther's because when this Esther wants you, wants to destroy the anointing upon you, she will make you to make sure this woman goes. Remember, Vashti was a wife of some. Vashti was a wife, a mother to children, the woman of a king. And every king's woman, if you go to Rachel Ruto, she has security. She has people who believe in her. She has people who can work with her. But remember, Esther didn't have a security. Esther didn't have people behind her, only Mordecai. People were not with her, but she was able to penetrate into that family and make sure that Vashti is out of the compound. And the Vashti was hated. In the book I was trying to read this Bible, I did have not found a verse that says, Vashti are the one. There's no verse that says when Vashti died. This woman, Esther, when she enters into your life, she will make sure the Vashti that was in you has been killed, has been destroyed, has been brought down. Be careful of the Esthers, because they don't come with weapons. They don't come with slahas. They come with witches. They come with altars. We come with our covenants. They go to witch doctors and on a puja na makirisi. When they end up because they will fast for you to come out. They will fast for you to go. They will fast for you to lose your marriage. They will fast for you to lose this ministry. They will fast for you to get out of your business so that somebody else can get into business. Esther and Mordecai, they commanded even courts to go into prayers. They commanded even sheep to go to prayers. They commanded the cows to go to prayer. They commanded the maizi to go to prayers. They are very dangerous people. And Esther in your life is a dangerous person. He will make sure he will, she will not use a weapon, but she will destroy your marriage. We don't have a story of where much it went. We don't have a story of the children of Asti. They will come and destroy your children. They will come and destroy everything that belongs to you because of the interest. Because Esther didn't have the interest of the kingdom. She had the interest of their tribe. Therefore, they don't have the interest of what you have. They don't have interest of your children. They don't have interest of your ministry. They don't have interest of what they have an agenda. Be careful of these people. Because when they come, they will destroy everything for the sake of what they want to achieve. Praise be the name of God. Hallelujah. Uh, set a new standard number four. That's I was talking about the book of Esther, chapter number four, verse 14 to 16. Number four, uh, seven ways we are seven ways to your breath. Set a new standard. That's the book of Nehemiah. Somebody, I want to read this. I want to read this. Somebody to do it for us quickly. You set a new standard. You become extraordinary. Without a new standard, you will still walk in the same mark as everybody. You must be super, you must be aggressive, you must be higher than anybody else. You must be somewhere where nobody can be able to reach you if you set a standard. Somebody to read for us Nehemiah chapter 1, verse number 4 to 7. Nehemiah chapter 1, verse 4 to 7. You must be able to set a standard. You must be able to stand way above others. You must stand up as you read. Nehemiah chapter 1, verse 4 to 7. The Bible yes. says, So it was when I heard these words mm -hmm. that I sat down and wept and mourned for many days. I was fasting and praying before the God of heaven. Mm -hmm. And I said, I pray, Lord God of heaven, O great and awesome God, you will keep your commandment and mercy with those who love you and observe your commandments. Please let your ear be attentive and your eyes open, mm -hmm. that you may hear the prayers of your servant which I pray before you now, mm -hmm. day and night, mm -hmm. for the children of Israel, your servants, mm -hmm. 
and confess the, the sins of the children of Israel which have, uh, we have sinned against you. Mm -hmm. Both we, uh, both my father's house and I have sinned. Mm -hmm. Verse 7. We have acted corruptly against you and we have not kept the commandments, the mm -hmm. statutes. We have not kept the commandments, the statutes, nor the ordinances which you commanded your servant Moses. Mm -hmm. Verse 8. Remember, I pray, the word that you commanded your servant Moses, saying, if you are unfaithful, I will scatter you among the nations. But if you return to me and keep my commandments and do them, do, uh, though some of you are cast out to the farthest part of the heavens, yet I will gather them from there and I will bring them to the place which I have chosen as a dwelling for them. Thank you. Setting a new standard is no knowing the approach, how to approach your God. How you approach your God will make you rise up. Because the Bible says that God promised them if they come back to him, if they repent, then he will rise them high above all other nations. He will make them superior. That is raising your standard. Because the Bible in the book of Deuteronomy 7, uh, Deuteronomy 28 verse 1, the Bible says, If you obey diligently and faithfully follow the statutes of God, then God will raise you high above all the nations. If you raise your standard, how you connect with your God, how you relate with your God, how you walk with your God, He raises you high above any other person. No weapon that is fashioned against you will be able to catch you. No enemy that is up against you that will be able to see you. God will make them blind and do so they will always see you new. God will make their ears will not hear you. And you will always be triumphing over snakes and scorpions. They will not going to assess you. They are not going to beat you. They are not going to conquer you. But you become a winner. Because of raising a standard that is high above any other. So do not walk alongside with other people just for the sake because you want them to be happy with you. Let, let them not be happy with you, but raise your standard. Let them come to your standard. Let them come to their position. Do not walk with them because this is an agreed position. Do not walk with anybody because this is what we have agreed as a team. Walk high, high above every other. Create a space where there is no space. Go ahead where there is nobody. Be the leader because you are not the, lay, you are not the tail, but a leader. Do the will of God because God created us in his own image. And always God has always been ahead of us. So if you become like God, you always become ahead of everybody because you have set your own standard. Set your own class. Set your own position. Set your own decisions. Set your own dressing code. Set your own things that you want them to happen. Because that is what God wants you to be. That is what God wants you to become. He wants you just to set your goals and everybody else will fall into your goals. I will not preach like others. I will not do like others. I will not be like any other preacher. I will be like myself. I will teach like myself. I will walk like myself. I will dress like myself. And I will set my own standard. Even if you try to come and beg me, I will tell you, keep off my life. I will know where I am going. Tell your neighbor, I know where I am going. Number, number five, design your new life, the book of Colossians 2, 13 to number 18. Design your own design. Have your own design. Have your own plan. If it is a church like this one, have your own design. Don't come with how other churches are planning. How other just they do their services. Don't do like them. You are not chosen like them. You are chosen alone. You are set aside alone. God planned you alone. He brought you here alone. Yet we look like God. But look at our faces. We are differently looking. We are not the same people. If you can see there are people who are dark. There are people who are not faced. There are people who are tall. There are people who are slim. There are people who are huge. But all of us, we look like God. All of us, we resemble God. But God decided to give you a different God of your life. So be, design your own life according to the inspiration, according to the plan of God, according to the book of Colossians. You're struggling to find the book. Yes? 
Hallelujah. It's the book of Colossians. Verse chapter number 2, verse 13 to 18. Yes, you can read. Colossians chapter 2, from verse 28, 19, 13, 18. And you will be dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh. He has made alive together with him, having forgiven all your trespasses. Having wiped out the handwriting of the requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us, and he has taken and he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross, having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them uh, in it. So let no one judge you in food or in drink, or regarding a festival or a new moon or Sabbaths, which are shadow of things to come. But the substance is of Christ. That every writing that was written against your life, everything that they had said about you, Jesus has wrapped them. Jesus has removed everything. Because he has died for you. That he's saying that he has wrapped every writing. They say you are not going to succeed. They say you are going to fail. They say you are going to you are going to die. They say your business is going to come up again. They say your marriage will never stand up again. They say everything. This Jesus has robbed, has cancelled everything that is setting a new, setting having a uh, taking up new habits because I need, uh, sorry, uh, taking up where is it? Sign your new life. When Jesus wraps off every communication in your life, a new story will be written. A new biography will come up. A new name will come up. A new sanctuary will start. A new move will begin in you. Because something new has been written. Something new has been written too. And the old story about you is away. When I was speaking, when I started preaching, people, many people came and told me, I don't remember what they killed him. I don't remember what they killed him. Every many people ran away from me because they thought walking with me. There are even people who used to come to this church, but they will never tell their families where they are coming. They will say, when I was a Nigerian, but I was not a Nigerian, I was a Kenyan. But because they knew I have something. But they don't want to be associated. They didn't know that Jesus had wrapped the, 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 the old writings and they put a new writing in my life. And I was a different man. And now everybody all over the world is listening to me because God has indicated a new version of doing things. A new version of making things work. That is how God is going to do. If you change your habits, if you change how you look at things, if you change how you do things, if you change how you make things work, because this is the plan of God. This is the agenda of God. The agenda of God is to make you succeed. The agenda of God is to make a new design because God is a master planner. God is an arrangement of everything that happens in your life. God is a master planner. He is a plan. He planned you. He knows, he knew before you were born, this house was created. This house was built. This house was built in God's mind. And he was he had your mind in his plan. He had you in his plan. He had everything he knew that you would come as seed. When a Chinese was constructing this seed, God had a plan that you come to sit on this seed. If you look at it inside, in the spiritual eye, your name is there. That today, you will be sitting on it. So God has a plan for you. God has every arrangement for you to succeed. God has every ways that he has created for you. You are not going to fail. You are going to succeed. You are going to become a winner. You are going to conquer every mountain. You are going to win every step. And number six, take up new habits. Pray for your breakthrough. The breakthrough you have to pray for it. Take up new habits. Become a prayer warrior. Become a prayer person who prays. Pray for your breakthrough. So pray until something happens. Just not let it. Because God has opened the door for you. There are some people who are gatekeepers that will come and stop you from becoming. 
There are some people who are gatekeepers that they will not want you to succeed. They will want you to fail. They will want you not to go. Therefore, when God says something about your life, pray for it. Continue. Have a new habit of praying. Have a new agenda of being a prayer. Have habits. Habits. Don't be a, 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 a monger. A luma monger. Don't be a, somewhere a gossiper. But be a seeker of the word of God. Be a seeker of prayer. Become a prayerful woman. Become a prayerful man. Become a prayerful person that continuously pray for that breakthrough. Sustain your breakthrough through the prayer. Sustain the fire of the breakthrough. Sustain the fire of the agenda of God. Sustain the fire of whatever God has given you. This ministry sustains the fire. That is why you see in the morning, we have introduced two hours of prayers. Two hours of prayers. And there are people who sleep here in the night. So because we have this fire. Remember, when I dele 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 uh, delegated cashiers to somebody, that somebody slowly but surely killed our cashiers. Because the agenda of the devil is to make sure that we don't have an every Friday cashier. I say in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, these cashiers must come back in the name of Jesus. I claim them back in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I claim them back in the mighty name of Jesus. Every Friday we must come for a cashier. Every single, even if it is one person, come for this single question. We used to have old men, these old men, this is my, my son there, they used to come for every Wednesday, a question. We used to have a huge number of about 50. But somebody came in, cropped in, killed those questions. Slowly but surely, that is how they kill you. First of all, before they start killing you, they will stop the fire of prayers in you. They will make sure you don't pray. They will make sure that you are busy for prayers. They will make sure that you don't plan how to pray. They will make sure you don't wake up in the night for prayers. They will make sure when you are walking, you are not praying. So that they can keep the fire in you. Have a new habit from today. Lift up your hand and tell God, I want that new habit of being a prayer warrior. I want to have to be praying wherever I'll be going. I want to be praying wherever I'll be doing. I want to be praying wherever I'll be doing. I want to be praying in Jesus' name. That one you find in the book of Romans 10, verse number 13. Having a new habit of being prayer warrior. And lastly, but not least, the number seven. Get clear on your way. Praise be the name of God. Because that is what has made us fail. Not having a clear picture of where you're going. Not having a clear picture of the kind of a man you want in your life. Not having a clear picture of what a good a, a kind of a wife you have you want in your life. Not having a clear picture of the kind of business you want. Not having a clear picture of not having a clear picture of what kind of a ministry you have. You must have a clear picture, understanding, and knowing this is what I want for my ministry. This is what I want to become. That's the book of First John 5, number 14. This is the confidence we have. First John 5, verse 14. This is the confidence we have in approaching God. That if we ask anything according to his will, he will hear you. It is only according to his will. You must have a clear picture. That if I ask God according to his will, so you must understand the will of God in what you are asking for. Is it this time? Or is it tomorrow? Are you asking God whatever you are asking God from because it is within the will? Or it is well out of the will? Don't ask anything if it is not in the will of God. Ask everything. And when you are praying, tell God if it is your will, let it be done. If it is your will, let it come to pass. If it is your will, let it be everything. Surrender it to God for the will of God 